In this video, we're going to be turning this to this. Hey guys, Jonathan back in the workshop here at Shadow Foam this week and we are going to be taking a traditional tool bag like this one which can be a bit of a nightmare. It reminds me of Colin's tool bag here. He had all of his Nipex stuff piled high in a bag like this and we changed it over to, for him into a toolbox. However, in this episode, we're going to be changing it into another portable option because not everybody can have a lovely workshop like Colin Furs. So we're going to be changing from a tool bag over to a tough system setup. So this is not too much bigger than this tool bag, but in here we can have four of our shadow foam inserts, two layers in each. We can get all of this stuff organized and a lot easier to find, a lot easier to know when something's missing. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos, and let's get into it. So that's the layout sorted. I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously we've got loads of spaces between things, but at the end of the day, the beauty of shadow foam is you can always add stuff in. So there's not a problem having gaps because actually what we'll be doing is cutting the bulky power tools into the top layers and then having everything in the bottom layers cut flush into the foam so that they stack nice and neat. Um, we've only got one battery. We've got two batteries actually, but we're actually, we have got a third one on the way. So we're going to cut a space um, for this battery here, which is not a problem. I'll just take that off, stick it on there. And with all of that being said, all I need now is a cutting kit. So our cutting kits have got everything you need to get started cutting shadow foam. They've got the anti-cut gloves, they've got the blades, they've got the scalper handle, they've got instructions and stickers. So it's everything you need to do this job. So I'm gonna get my glove on, where is it? It's over there. And I can start cutting. So when it comes to cutting the foam, it is a very simple process. All you've got to do is place the item where you want it to go. If it's a drill, screwdriver, if it's a bottle, a pot, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is, you lay it where you want it to go. You then use your scalpel like a pencil and you cut around the item nice and steadily, trying to keep as true to the profile as you can. You're trying to keep as accurate to that silhouette as you can and you're keeping the knife or the scalpel at 90 degrees all of the time, making sure it's perpendicular to the foam. If you go off on an angle, it can make things a bit more complicated. Once you've gone all the way around the item and you've met back up at the start, you can then move the item out of the way and you can press on the foam and that'll show you the cut that you've made. And all you want to do now is go back with a scalpel and cut down deeper, make that cut you've made as deep as you need it to be. Now I'm working on a 50 mil foam insert here and I'm cutting in a drill. So we're gonna make sure that we're cutting down at least 30 to 40 mil so that we can make sure that the drill is at least halfway into the foam so it looks nice and it's housed in there, you know, strongly enough that it's not gonna fall out. Once you've done that and you've gone all the way, you're confident you've gone all the way around, all you have to do is Push your fingers down one side, you start in a corner or an edge is easiest to do, and you're just pulling the foam up towards you. Now you can start with just one layer or two layers, I mean, when you've been doing it for a while, I kind of go right to the bottom and peel back three or four layers all at once, and we just start pulling that foam, easing that foam up towards us, and just chasing it along with your fingers. You're kind of plowing out the foam rather than peeling it out. And when it comes to the bottom, that's pretty smooth already. I'm quite happy with that, but we have got the foam smooth spinners. We've also got the hot foam smoother. Both of those make light work of getting it perfectly smooth on the bottom of your cutouts. So we can use that exact same technique for all the other items, big or small, and let's get sorted. Right, so that's all the cutting done. That's what I'd say is the hard bit, not that it's very hard, but it's all done. And we've still got some space around some of these items because we can add some drill bit sets, stuff like that. But for now, that's as much cutting as we're doing in this video, except for the finger pulls. So a lot of these items, you can get them out without finger pulls and it is kind of personal preference. But for something like this drill here, it's so much easier if you've got a circle either side of this trigger, just to be able to get it in and out. Then something like these, Screwdrivers in a row, we can add a strip across there, make that nice and easy. So let's start with some circles around these drills, and we're gonna do that with one of our stencil sets. Now these are available on the website, that's a very simple thing, but they just make finger pulls so easy because you've got a range of circles and then you've got this radius gauge. This is for doing like uh, corner radiuses if you're doing an insert for a, a flight case. 
But all we need is the circle gauges and we're going to take the smaller one. Actually, we might not actually, we'll take the bigger one. And we just want to go for a reasonable size circle that matches on this trigger here. So we're using the 40 mil circle on this stencil here. We're just placing it where we want it to go and we are lining them up. So I'm using this ruler here to make sure that both sets of circles are in line so they look good. Uh, and it's as simple as just using the same technique as we've drawn around the cut around the items. We're just using the circle gauge to cut that semicircle there. We're doing it on both sides and then we're taking the stencil away, cutting down to the depth that we need and then peeling back the foam. And I'll do the same thing on this combi drill as well. And if I stick the drills in there now, they should look nice and tidy and that makes it a heck of a lot easier getting these drills in and out. So that one's done. Let's move on to the next one. Right, so now for the screwdrivers, we don't want to use um, circles because we'll have them dotted everywhere. So we use a straight edge. I'm just gonna use this ruler here and it's uh, 25 mil wide, so it makes the ideal width for finger pulls. Uh, we sell these on the website too. You can pick up a 30 centimeter steel ruler and we're just gonna cut down both sides. That we're gonna make sure it's squared up. Then we're gonna cut down both sides and that's gonna give us a nice little finger pull run. And it just looks a lot tidier than loads of circles everywhere. And once we've done that, we can just peel back the little bits of foam. This is quite a satisfying bit. They all just pop out nice and easy. And that gives us our little finger pull trench. Right, so that is all the cutting done. And that's all the finger pulls done. And I'm really happy with how they've turned out. So let's chuck them in the case. As we've mentioned, there's still a lot of room in there to add some tools, add some items. But I think the principle of this project or this video is to showcase that you know, this, these two cases aren't much bigger than that bag. They're about the similar size and it's so much more organized. You know, having all your tools thrown in a bag is just a nightmare when it comes to trying to find stuff. However, with this, we've got one layer in the bottom there and then we've got a layer on the top. We could, we could add some handles to this to make them a bit easier to come in and out, but we've got two layers in that one and then we've got two layers in this one. Right, so that is all sorted. We've got all four inserts in these two boxes, not much bigger than the tool bag, and we've got loads of room to add some more stuff as well. And if you need to find something, it's dead easy. So that is a job done, I reckon. So if you like this video, go back and watch some of our other Dewalt videos. We've done every one of the boxes that they make, the Tough System drawers, the other Tough System boxes, we've done the T-Stacks, We've also done the Stanley Pro Stacks, which are interchangeable. So go watch that playlist, check out those videos. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? That's subscribe. It.